Good evening and welcome to Crossroads. Genetically modified mosquitoes have gotten the green light to be released in America. Programs on this actually started in Florida in 2018. Then it was Texas and the programs are being expanded. And now there's a push to release the GMO mosquitoes in other states as well. We'll see how it goes. Look, the pitch is pretty good. They say these mosquitoes, they don't bite people, they just mate with the females, and they're modified so that the offspring die off. They've been shown to massively reduce mosquito populations in other countries, and if they manage to bite people, they don't pass on the GMO parts to humans, and if animals eat them, it also doesn't affect them. So we can get rid of the mosquitoes and put an end to deadly diseases like malaria and Zika. You know, what's the problem? Why aren't we doing it everywhere? Well, the problem is all those points I just mentioned, they all have important caveats which are not being widely told to the public. And also there are other programs that work with the GMO mosquitoes that are raising, let's just say, serious concerns that this initial rollout is just a big Trojan horse, including notably for involuntary vaccinations. Let me explain. Now, a few different countries have been using these GMO mosquitoes for a good while now. Uh, Brazil tends to be the main example that's used. Programs there actually started way back in 2002, and researchers have been releasing them into the wild since 2015. They're trying to stop the Zika virus, which is carried by a certain type of mosquito there. Here's how it works. They genetically alter the mosquitoes into with what researchers call a lethality gene, right? It's lethal. They breed the mosquitoes using a specific antibiotic, which prevents them from dying when they're, of course, growing the mosquitoes. If they don't get the antidote, they'll die before reaching maturity. Then they separate the males from the females. They keep the females to lay more eggs and they release the, the males into the public. The males do not bite humans. All they do is fly around and they mate with the females. The females in the wild, they then lay new eggs and those new mosquitoes die off from that lethality gene. Here's a video from the Brazil, in a programs in Brazil from 2017. When released, these mosquitoes reproduce with wild mosquitoes and cause their offspring to die. Although there are concerns about this technology, authorities have allowed limited releases to study its efficacy and safety. Well, here in this van, we can fit almost uh, 800,000 of male mosquitoes. As we go driving through the area, every time the app beeps, we just open one of the spots in here and the mosquitoes will fly around and do their job. Now, important to note, the same company that was doing that in Brazil is the same company doing it in Florida. And on that note as well, it's also heavily backed by billionaire Bill Gates. The company announced in April 22, in fact, that the next phase of its big rollout is enabled by U.S. $18 million of funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. But hey, sounds great, right? Well... Here's the parts that are not as widely known. The lethality gene they put in, it actually doesn't kill all the mosquitoes. It only kills the females. The males go on living. When the first generation comes about, all of the females die. The males then go on to keep breeding. In the second generation, only half of the females die. And this continues for about 20 generations, they say, before the lethality gene allegedly disappears. In other words, the GMO mosquitoes do bite humans, as opposed to what we've been told. It's just not the first generation. That's the technicality. The females that go on living in all those subsequent generations, they can bite humans. So the claim that there is no risk of these GMO mosquitoes drinking people's blood, biting you and I, it is deeply misleading. They're lying to the public about it. Now, of course, researchers are also claiming that there isn't any risk with that. They say there's no evidence of gene transfer when a mosquito bites someone. And, you know, people wonder about, well, what if a bird eats it? They say if an animal eats one of these bugs, they also do not incorporate the DNA into their genome. In other words, they claim the so-called lethality gene, the thing that would concern most of us, 
that it won't affect humans or animals. But there's also a problem with that, and the problem is mutation. Other less talked about studies, they've actually shown that GMO mosquitoes result in hybrids after just a couple years. A 2019 study from Nature states that after around you know, 27 to 30 months, their genome becomes part of the mosquito population. It notes that the GMO project led to a hybrid breed of mosquitoes in several countries, which were actually a mix of three different populations. Now look, personally, I don't trust GMO at all. I personally do believe that GMO affects people, and I'm personally very much concerned about mutations, those unforeseen consequences. When you toy with nature, you're playing with life itself. And it reminds me of some history, like what happened in China in the late 1950s. What happened in China? The Chinese Communist Party rolled out its so-called Four Pests campaign. They set out to exterminate rats, flies, sparrows, and most importantly, mosquitoes. This led to one of the most deadly famines in human history. Now look, they only realized afterwards, in their case, that sparrows eat bugs. The bugs specifically that eat the plants. And after they killed the sparrows, what happened? The insects lost a key predator, and crops were devoured by insects. Now, look, it's still actually unknown how many people died in China because of this. Current estimates say the program killed between 23 million and 55 million people. Imagine, 55 million people killed. Now, look, back to our current times, I'm not the only one with some concerns. Plans to release the GMO mosquitoes in California, for example, was on track. It got denied. And what happened? Well, the state legislature posted a letter in, in 2022, and it said there were, quote, many issues not addressed by the EPA's review. And it adds this, quote, the release of genetically engineered mosquitoes in California could be an experiment that, due to genetic spread, never ends and creates many unintended consequences. And it says there are other more proven and less risky methods to control mosquitoes. Now, the FDA on its part released a 140-page risk assessment on the GMO mosquitoes, but oddly, it looks like they deleted it. In fact, here's what you see if you visit that page right now. You get a page not found alert. Nothing's there. But... If you pull up an archive of that exact same URL, you'll find there used to be an FDA report on that link. You can see it right here, in fact. And keep in mind, it does conclude that they found no evidence that the proteins in the mosquitoes pose any risk for either allergic reaction or people or toxic reactions. But again, as California expressed in its concerns, some of those conclusions are based on, let's say, limited research. Now, that being said, the CDC has a page on this as well, these programs. It notes that GMO mosquitoes are regulated by the Environmental Protection Agency. And it notes as well that since 2019, over a billion GMO mosquitoes have already been released into the wild in other countries and around the world. But it notes something else, which is ironically pretty dang concerning. It looks like there's some sleight of hand at play. Researchers claim that in previous studies, they were able to reduce mosquito populations in some areas by 95%. In other words, they're claiming they just about wiped them out. But what they don't tell people openly, what they do not say everywhere, and what they try to hide when they try to promote it, well, the population of mosquitoes comes right back afterwards unless they continue the programs indefinitely. The CDC page actually says this. It states that when they stop releasing the GMO mosquitoes into an area, they find that the, quote, population will slowly return to normal levels. In other words, it doesn't actually get rid of the mosquitoes. When they stop the programs, the mosquitoes come back regardless of that so-called 95% kill rate. So what's the point? Well, look, they have to keep doing it. And this means if they roll out this program, it's potentially here to stay. Well, that's all for YouTube. For the rest of the episode, come join us on Epic TV, where we have a flash sale right now, 
25 cents for a week. It's nothing, 25 cents. Come over, join us, escape censorship. We have some really important stuff to talk about. For example, how in addition to all the things we discussed so far about GMO mosquitoes, they're also doing experiments and using them. They've already done it to be able to vaccinate people using mosquitoes. They're referring to them as flying syringes, the way they're actually talking about them. We have a lot, a lot of other important stuff to talk about, including, for example, what the Q and LGBTQ actually stands for and the agenda, which includes pedophilia behind that. Uh, we'll also go into other things, for example, what the World Economic Forum is working on. The idea that you'll own nothing, but you'll be happy. What does it mean to own nothing? How does it fit into stakeholder capitalism? We'll talk about a lot of important things that we just can't talk about on YouTube, which is why you need to escape YouTube, escape censorship, and join us on Epic TV. Again, flash sale right now. Link in the description. Come join us and I'll see you there. People from 160 countries illegally cross the U.S.-Mexico border and give themselves up to Border Patrol. But what about the ones who evade Border Patrol? These are known as the gotaways. You can safely assume that anybody that went through the extra effort to avoid U.S. Border Patrol was not a asylum seeker by default. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but somewhere down the road if somebody rapes and kills somebody, and we find out that they came through here on my watch, that's unacceptable. These men had surrounded my house. They were banging on my back door. They were banging on my front door. I can't understand it unless you're out here seeing it every day. 21 dead bodies on the road. Code 3 response. Is it wrong to ask people to come to your front door or your home? Then why would it be wrong to ask people to come to the front door of our nation? Their primary goal is to circumvent the checkpoints, go undetected. People that do not want to surrender, those are going to be the potential terrorists, the criminals, the real threat to the U.S. We were hoping the federal government would step in and do something, but they didn't. We have no clue who they are or where they're going. That's the scary part. 